The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach, dear friends, do we go? And uh, as we uh, check in almost every day, as we do at the beginning of the show, we've got a little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll. And uh, that's 1995. A good year, but also the current quote on the S&P cash, it got down to what, uh, two or three points below that in 1977. It's back up to 1995. It pretty much ran up into the EIA numbers that came out at uh, 1030. It, uh, it got to 1999.31 on the S&P cash. Volume is very good, which is one of the clues out here. Uh, as to why I was not pulling the trigger short. Now, you know, if you're trading five-minute charts, that's one thing. I don't do that. I used to do it a long time ago, but uh, pretty much went away from that uh, constant uh, digging a ditch every day kind of deal. Yeah, you know, people can make money that way. I find that kind of tiring. I like to wait back and find the big fat pitch down the middle and hit it into the grand stands. Anyway, uh, almost 3 billion shares as we start the day. And uh, what else can you say? Um, that's about it. A big day out here. But of course, it is options expiration. It is one of those days where you should expect the unexpected as uh, about as much as we can do. But uh, this is, if you go back and look at all the options expiration days, which are basically uh, the eighth day before expiration, like today. And uh, if you want to see how this works, even go to expiration where there's a vacation day in between these, and you'll see that uh, you get these exact kind of uh, inside days down, back up um, on those days a day early. So a lot of times, if you see a vacation week in there, you'll see that this actually happens on Tuesday. You can go back to about 1997 when this phenomenon really started to take off. A lot of this was driven in the 80s by the uh, ability for people to buy workstations, uh, micros and uh, SGI. In fact, SGI, uh, Silicon Graphics, played a huge part in the late 80s computerfication, if that's a word, I just made it a word, of, uh, the, uh, of the market. And if you can get a hold of a copy, it's still floating around on the internet. I think I've got a copy somewhere laying around. There is a great video of uh, Tudor Jones. I think it's 86 or 87. Uh, of him trading. He didn't like the way that it portrayed him, so he made a deal with the company that made it for PBS. He said, I will buy every VH, uh, VHS tape you have of that if you print no more. And I think they had like a couple thousand of them that they were selling, and they figured it was going to take 10 years to sell the rest of them. He just didn't want it out there. It's kind of like the guy that bought the newspaper. Uh, because he was like arrested or something. And on the front page, we went out and bought every newspaper. And of course, they just printed more. Well, he made a deal for him not to print more, but uh, it still makes the rounds occasionally on um, the internet. And you can find it if you dig enough, dig uh, far enough. But he's got one of the original SGI machines that was out there so that they could really start doing, I guess it's kind of what they called the rise of the quants, the quantitative traders especially in options. But that's really when uh, originally option market makers and big hedge funds like uh, Mr. Tudor Jones uh, really got started and started making a great deal of money. They figured out how to play options very well. Anyway, 
Um, well, what else we'll do with that? Uh, uh, anything else? No, no. Uh, I think that's it. Time to get this party started. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, we got a lot of news today, so I better get busy. And, of course, on this day in 1896, the beginning of the Dow Jones Industrial Average begins continuous daily publication. It's 12 members of the great industrial giants of the time, American Cotton and Oil. I guess it's Cotton Oil. I don't know what they do with Cotton Oil today. Doesn't seem like a big need for it. American Sugar, American Tobacco, Chicago Gas. I've had their pizza. I know what Chicago Gas is all about. American Spirits Manufacturing. Uh, I wonder how they did through the uh, through uh, the 30s. Anyway, uh, General Electric, Lacide Gas. I think I had Lacide Gas somewhere where I lived. I can't remember what it, where it was now. Uh, National Lead. Of course, you couldn't get enough lead in the paint back in those days. U.S. Cordage. Got to tie people up with rope. Tennessee Coal and Iron. Oh, boy. Uh, long gone, I'm sure. U.S. Leather. Uh, probably a different meaning for that in the uh, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey era. And U.S. Rubber. I'll leave that one alone. See if you can remember any of those names the next time someone tries telling you that growth companies of today will endure forever and ever and ever. Amen. And as we go on to other things, uh, there are a lot of clouds over Europe. I noticed that Microsoft and some of these other stocks in the uh, tech sector were a little weak coming out here this morning. What we had uh, just before the bell really came out, it kind of slowly moved around in, uh, I think, around 10 a.m., was that the EU had ruled that assumptions that data sent to the U.S. were safe from uh, – were safe uh, to the U.S. were uh, safe was incorrect, and it has avoided the safe harbor status given to the nation. Basically, they are finally done with the U.S. deciding that it owns data everywhere. Uh, that uh, of course, uh, uh, security and Al Qaeda and ISIS and everybody else means that no matter where the data is, we should uh, have it in the United States. Uh, that we should be able to use it in our court system, and we should be able to, of course, uh, tell anybody in another country that they have to ship us their data if we want it. Um, for all the places in the world where we're acting uh, like we want, don't want to be involved, uh, this is the one place where we're doing everything we can to shove a thumb in the eye of uh, the EU. And it seems um, where we won't do anything and there isn't a red line we aren't uh, willing to back away from uh this one seems to be one that we continue to push which is very interesting to me it's one of the outliers in the political arena these days facebook google apple microsoft and indeed any outfit which takes data can be barred from transferring private information across the atlantic your highest court struck down a 15 year old data sharing treaty saying the u.s has invalidated the safe harbor agreement and again, this has been one of the parts that I thought was the weakest. And you've already seen Google, Microsoft, and Facebook. I don't know about Apple. Uh, I've heard the other ones have already started their own data centers over there and incorporating over there and trying to put up roadblocks so that um, you, they couldn't force or threaten people like CEOs here in the United States to make their companies do their bidding overseas. I haven't heard anything about Apple, and I don't know what the deal is on that. I know that they've gotten some flack from China about it, but it's, it's one of those things where Apple, I think, just because of the way they do business, is much better at keeping things secret. I know that uh, at least in some of the roundtables that have gone to the uh, White House of tech folk, uh, Mr. K uh, 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 the CEO of Apple has been one of the most vocal and outspoken against it, but has not really made, uh, or I haven't seen the plans for Apple in handling this issue. But uh, this, if we were talking about anything, especially the cloud, and of course the title of my slide here is Clouds Over Europe, is one of the biggest things because, of course, 
um, that could uh, take a lot of wind out of the sail of all these companies that think that they're cloud services, including, and it didn't bring it up. And this is another company that's done well in hiding what they're doing and how they're doing it. But again, uh, uh, Amazon and how they handle their data and what people are buying and everything else um, is not on this list, wasn't in the article. I dug around, no real discussions about what Amazon's doing with their data and their data services, but uh, continues to be a big issue for tech. And of course, I'm the tech guy. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Ah, we've got, uh, uh, we've got uh, Taco Hell. Of course, we're talking about Yum Brands. Sir, drop the chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. Drop I said, drop the chalupa. Put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Well, they dropped the chalupa at Yum Brands. The things got slaughtered overnight. And what is more interesting to me is just uh, four or five weeks ago, the new CEO said, Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. But uh, that was not true. You're telling me a big fat lie. Uh, I don't know how he didn't tell everybody a big fat lie. And uh, thanks to Catch a Predator, we got to have an episode or a segment on this show to call Catch a CEO. Well, certainly, uh, uh, well, there's some kind of nursery rhyme about Catch him by his toe. Or something about liars? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, certainly the one thing that's very interesting to me is that we haven't heard a lot of calls for the CEO's head yet today. Now, maybe we're going to see this in the next couple of days, but the rather new CEO, a lot of people are saying, well, he just threw the uh, bathtub in with the kitchen sink on this one as he's a new CEO, so he just decided to clean house. But the numbers are horrifically bad in China. I like Chinese. I'm going to have about a thousand of these today because everything seems to have a theme song attached to it. But anyway, of course, uh, they're really blaming uh, China and the dollar index and some of these other things. Just very hard for me to figure out exactly uh, how a lot of this makes any sense. Um, I'm wondering if the lack of uh, calling for somebody's head is just that they're hoping to sell into any bounce on this. But it, uh, if you want to talk about one six stock, it certainly looks like this. It certainly makes me think that there's a lot more to this story. And uh, like I said, uh, he kind of told us a big fat lie. You're telling me a big fat lie. I think he did. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger T. TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesci.
Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 And we're back. Uh, one of the new IPOs for today is a company called Pure Storage. They've been trying to push this dog out for a while. And it got out and went flat almost immediately. Um, went out like $16.50, I think, trading out $16.14 uh, out the door. This is one of the last ones they were able to get out the door. I do not like this particular company. And I think that them pushing them out at this time has a lot to do with the fact that the company is probably not going to be worth more in a year than it's worth today. Now, I like the business this company is in. I dislike the technology that they're using. We talked about the new memory technology from Micron and Intel. We also have some other stuff. But what they are doing is they make um, basically hard drives that go on cards that you plug inside uh, rack servers in uh, cloud services companies. Now, they use the same kind of memory that's in your USB thumb drives. I'll hold one up here. My wonderful PNY 16 gig USB 3.0 drive. Uh, they put that memory in it, which is very slow to write, but very cheap, but very fast when you want to go get it. And that's what these things are. They, if, you're, if you go to a big website that's like Sears or something like this, they will take whatever times, and it can be slow, like overnight, They'll put all the data that goes on that on one of those uh, NAND-type memory cards. And then, of course, the server can get it very quickly. And it's fairly inexpensive. What I suspect, though, is within a year or so, the NAND flash will be more expensive than other memory technologies coming out. And therefore, the whole benefit of them making memory with flash 
cheaper technology memory at today will probably go away. Uh, I just don't see, especially with uh, Intel and Micron pushing it, that their new two-wire stuff is going to be uh, less uh, more expensive than NAND uh, down the road. So if this thing bounces or moves fairly well, you might have some trades in it. But uh, to me, the technology seems to be dated. They're in the right area. I just don't like the idea that they're built on NAND memory and not some of the uh, more uh, interesting memory. Of course, also, when you turn the computer off and turn back on, it's still there. So if the, if the system goes down, you can be back up in a heartbeat, which is one other nice feature of it. So maybe the operating system can be on this. But I think that the big money is having huge amounts of data available instantaneously for the processor. And that goes back to Intel and Micron's new technology and maybe even HP's when they split apart. So I'm going to say that uh, not a big fan of this one out here. And uh, what did I have out here? If you were expecting a big IPO bounce, you did not get it in PSTG. What is that? Uh, post center. Hmm. Anyway, I'll think of it in a minute. Samsung, first quarter. In two years, the things have gotten better. This would mark the first time Samsung Electronics has seen a year-over-year -year growth since the third quarter of 2013. Revenue is forecast to be 51 trillion won. Why not? Anyway, about $43.9 billion. We talked about them last year spending billions of dollars to get into the memory business like Micron, uh, like SanDisk, and it seems like their ability to quit relying on smartphone sales to drive their profits has made Samsung at least uh, turn the corner. Um, of course, uh, their smartphone sales are doing okay. And uh, I think they only have to buy one part that they don't make now to make a smartphone. So they have a definitive edge in at least the Android ecosystem. But... Uh, Man, doing pretty well, actually, and kind of interesting to see how Apple is trading uh, with Samsung doing better. And I uh, just don't see a lot of juice in Apple. In fact, uh, during the halftime show on uh, CNBC, which I don't tend to watch, I tend to fast forward just to see what they're talking about, to know what uh, the street is trying to push, did slow, uh, slow down to one big segment. And it was a Lollapalooza of Apple bashing by one of the guys from, um, is it, what's his name? Not Dennis O'Leary from a Shark Tank. Maybe somebody in the den can tell me. Uh, uh, what is it? What is it? Kevin O'Leary? That's what his name is. Anyway, uh, I tell you what, I have not heard people publicly, uh, kind of like... Uh, Huh. cursing the uh, the pride of the Yankees or something. Uh, but they were going after Apple rather viciously today and the rest of the traders. So uh, maybe the worm has finally turned for the invincibility of Apple. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, get back to my other stuff. We talked about Samsung. What's next? Uh, it's a breaking of the law, of course. And uh, what do I got out here? Breaking the law. 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 Anyway, FINRA announced today it's expelled New York-based Halcyon Cabot Partners and barred Chief Executive Officer, uh, officer uh, Michael Morris and Chief Compliance Officer Ronald Heinemann from the securities industry for fraud, sales practice abuses, and widespread supervisory and anti-money -money laundering failures. Um, I kind of, I'm on the FINRA mailing list just because I find it interesting. Uh, generally, you don't find FINRA able to beat the very biggest of the Wall Street firms out here, but the, uh, the most viciously uh, diabolically evil uh, they do tend to throw a net over these folks. Uh, what is interesting to me is that these guys have been thrown out before and have come back yet again. They're like a bad rash. They just don't quit. Now, what they were doing was a scheme of a biotech to sell shares at a higher level and then rebate the money back to the person who bought it and make it look like the stock was trading at a much higher level. They returned a $1.75 uh, million dollar placement fee to the investor through sham consulting agreements. So when we look at penny stocks out here, just a general reminder, even though we saw stocks trade at a level, it isn't always that way. 
when you dig back into this, this was a private placement. They were trying to make it look like this private placement was going out at a much higher price so that they could shove this thing out to other folks. I hope that uh, the feds are looking at these folks for more than just tossing them out of the market. I called but didn't get a reply from FINRA at this time. That's what they always say on big news services. We called but got no uh, response at this time. Fraudulent scheme allowed the drug company to conceal it was selling its shares at a discount. Of course, propping them up and eh, maybe getting people to think that the company is worth a lot more than it was. Of course, a crude this morning, uh, market continued to rally until about 1030, until the EI numbers came out. I've dug a little bit into this during the day. And what it looks to me a great deal like is that why the rig counts are going down, a lot of people think, hey, the price has to go up. What we found out is production on the existing facilities has actually gone up. Now, we did have a little draw, I think, what, three and a half million barrels, but that's nothing. What we did find out is when you dug into the numbers and why uh, energy kind of rolled over today, what do we have out here for, let me get it, 47.90, I think we were up to 50 bucks, it's off 62 cents on crude, is that the, a lot of these crude companies do have to uh, get enough cash flow up to pay back a lot of these loans. And what they're doing is trying to find the most efficient wells, the ones that cost them the least, and shut down the rest of them. So as rig counts go down, it doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, actual volume of oil coming out of especially the northwest is slowing down at all. In fact, it sped up by about 3 or 4% over the last two weeks. So why uh, figures don't lie, liars can figure. Not really. They're just trying to do the best that they can to keep cash coming in, and they have to do it to keep uh, paying off a lot of those loans. But uh, just because a rig account goes down does not mean that they can't turn the spigot on a little higher in other places. And I think a lot of what we're seeing today was the initial reaction to those numbers and then the reversal of those numbers also, and a lot of people uh, ran thus very quickly uh, into that. Anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. I look forward to your calls as always. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. You can also post a message in the den. And uh, uh, there's somebody made a comment back up here that I wanted to comment on. Let me get back up here. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, I missed it. I forgot it. We'll move on. But uh, you can always comment in the... Oh, it was about Amazon. Uh, thanks, Z in the Den. I just remembered it. Uh, Amazon ro uh, basically has contracts with the CIA. So maybe that's why we didn't see it. I didn't think about it. I remember actually talking about it, but uh, probably a good point out there that we're not going to hear a great deal uh, of Amazon bad-mouthing the policies of the U.S. government and the CIA and the NSA uh, coming out there. Um, yeah, thank you much, Mr. Z, for reminding me about that. I wanted to comment, it, but I forgot about it because, well, my memory is short and my years are advancing. Anyway, uh, one other thing before we get into a few charts. This is options uh, delta neutral day, so you tend to see the market all over the place. It's much more important on where the market closes at the end of the day than any place it's been. Um, and uh, a lot of times I don't believe what happens today, and I don't believe what, uh, what happens during monthly options expiration on Fridays because there are a lot more factors going into it than any kind of long-term supply and demand they have to do with short-term supply and demand. But uh, Trans-Pacific uh, Trade Agreement saw a lot of discussions on it. I have no idea if it's good or bad. What I did dig out of it, and the, probably the biggest objections that I've heard so far, though, are very interesting as to food labeling. I know a lot of people are very interested in the whole uh, GMO kind of uh, idea of how things 
work out here. Uh, yeah, what is that? The world outside is hanging on by a very thin, non-GMO, cruelty-free organic hemp thread. Yes, it is. Anyway, uh, but uh, to me, especially for companies like Monsanto, uh, of course, that make a lot of the uh, GMO uh, kind of products, and CMG who say that they actually will only use GMO, one of the big agreements is that you cannot label the food. And they probably use the most disgusting um, examples of how Vietnamese shrimp uh, is made. And uh, if you believe them, eating one of them would instantly kill you faster than cyanide because of the horrible way that the shrimp are made. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, d apparently the ability for this Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement to label food is real. Now, unfortunately, this is one of these things where you have to pass it to find out what's in it, and a great deal of stuff has not been shown to even our congressmen. They've hidden parts of it. Uh, a great policy of the United States is to not let anybody know what actually they're doing. Uh, but uh, I think whether you're for it or against it, if this thing passes, we might see a lot of action in companies like Monsanto. Therefore, you could not say that the um, maybe the corn came from the United States. Maybe you couldn't say that the shrimp came from uh, Vietnam and therefore is probably grown, uh, grown with uh, toxic waste. But uh, companies that depend on it, like uh, Chipotle, Chipotle, um, who say that they, of course, are uh, GMO friendly, and Monsanto, who are, of course, Frankenstein friendly. Yeah, nice reference to October and Halloween. Um, could be a big issue for both of them. I don't know how the rest of it's going to come out, but this one provision may be the most important uh, provision that I can see in front of this Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement and uh, how it would affect at least uh, the stock market stocks. Probably a negative for CMG if they can't guarantee that their stuff is non-GMO and probably a big uh, boost for Monsanto as uh, you couldn't say the corn came from the United States or was GMO modified. Very interesting. Um, but uh, what can you say? It is a mad, 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 mad market and we'll go on from here. Let's get some charts. Again, you can email me at path at tfnn.com and uh, you can uh, send so to do. Uh, okay. I think I've answered all those. So let's go to a few of the charts out here and see how some of these are reacting today. Um, American Airlines is and was going to be added to the Dow uh, transports up a little today. Not a lot of volume in this. Really, you know, basically just did a retracement of this move up. The energy is probably a little bit more than I would like to see on the way back down. But I don't see a lot of people throwing themselves in way uh, in front of the bus on this one when uh, crude is somewhat ambiguous as to its long-term direction. We also know that especially these airlines have been historically horribly bad at hedging uh, at lows and uh, basically not hedging uh, as the uh, market goes higher, basically uh, always doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. But uh, not a lot of action in that one. I was wondering how it would be, but kind of did a fairly decent retracement out here. Let's uh, take a look at this one. Basically retraced about 50 per, uh, well, what is it? Eh, uh, the 618. Let me see if I can get this out here. Uh, 3811 would have been the 618 of this. Got to 3742 a couple times. So it kind of pierced that uh, 618 line and has popped back into it. But you'd want to see what kind of volume is coming in. What else do we have out here that I was interested in? AU. Wanted to see how this one did. Uh, this one is up to its consolidation range. Um, now, Anglo uh, Gold and Ashanti Limited is testing its high. That's the August 24th high at $8.93. 12 million shares uh, into that high. What do we see yesterday? 4.8 million shares today, about 4 million shares and a pullback. 
On the positive side, this thing did break through what was going to be fairly uh, a decent uh, resistance on the way up. If you were looking at buying these on the way back down, I'm not bullish on these, but it does have a nice confluence range uh, back here at $7.75 to $7.86. If you were bullish on the gold sector, that's probably where you would look for AU to re-enter it, uh, but I am not. Uh, what else do we have out here that was interesting to me? Dollar Tree. Um, this one is continuing down. It blew through um, some levels. It, you know, again, fairly decent volume. Again, I don't see any bottom in this. The energy, a little less on this last leg. So maybe there is a bottom coming in Dollar Tree. But uh, what you have to hate is that uh, this last low was on September 15th with 3.6 million shares, blew through it yesterday with 5 million shares, didn't really close below it, but certainly blew through it today, and that's on 6.6 .6 million shares for Dollar Tree. And see what else I have. Let me move some of this stuff around and make sure what we have going on here and update a few things. Da -da -da -da. Uh, da -da -da. I thought I had some in here, but no. And we'll get to all of it. Uh, what else do we have out here? Da -da -da. ELP, is that one of them? I didn't whittle down my list today. I've been rather busy with stuff. Uh, well, let's take a look at some of the stocks I do uh, remember. FCX, um, this one had a nice bounce out here. It's got lots of volume. Uh, this is on Carl Icahn getting two seats on the board of directors for Freeport. It was got to a high of uh, $13.44, was 79 million shares. So it certainly did break out the September 17th high. What you did not break out here and break above was the high of August 28th that had 110 million shares. We're going to be short that. So we are, if you want to be the most vicious on this, FCX needed uh, 110 million shares, and at uh, 80 million shares, may not bust it. What you would really want to uh, think about is if this thing uh, closes back under 1148 um, with uh, any kind of energy on the downside, this thing still may be wickedly in trouble. Carl Icahn is not always right. He's, I wouldn't bet against him too many times, but uh, you know what? We've got kind of a playground this week with China being closed. My question is, what happens Sunday night when China reopens? Do we see a 5 or 7 or 10 percent move either up or down in China? We've got a lot of uh, action happening uh, the rest of the world that is not being caught up with China very quickly. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have out here? Uh, M brands, da, 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 da. Uh, up and down. Uh, poor pounds, da, 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 da. Okay, uh, we'll go through a few more of these out here that I found. Gilead, uh, of course, uh, I don't know if you can say a lot about the whole IBB. We'll take a look at it when we get back. Uh, this certainly looks to me like one of these uh, indexes that is increasingly having maybe too many shorts in it. Going to have to buff a few of these off before it goes lower. Uh, up a little today on light volume. We'll talk about this when we come back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry powered by the acclaimed TAS 
with proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we have a request in the den about 3D systems. I love the way this thing tested the lows out here down to 1067. What I don't like is not a lot of energy in uh, the bounce out here. And what we've had in this big move higher in the markets over the last uh, four or five days uh, is people piling into stocks uh, that have a lot of cash on the balance sheet and do make money. The ones that don't make money and don't have a lot of cash uh, are tending to get uh, the short end of the stick. And my guess is until that changes, that uh, the companies in these 3D systems and uh, SSYS and others in this 3D sector may have made a bottom, but they may need a lot more consolidation and or a change in the amount of cash that's available to these companies. Um, that is probably it. They just should have bounced uh, with the tests that these things had. They had okay bounce, but they should have bounced and moved a lot higher with uh, 
you know, 12 million shares being invested with 2.4 million shares, we should have seen a great deal more out of them. We should have seen a lot more and some huge volumes and a sign of strength. And I think, uh, what was the, yeah, I'm just looking for retracement now. I think that's probably the only thing you can do. The character of the market is going to have to change for me to get very excited to get into these uh, out here. It's a nice run if you got it off the bottom. Uh, but uh, I think you've got uh, some tough sledding to do on any of these. And uh, we've got something out here. Uh, would I take profits on Oxy at this time? Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, definitely 100% I'd sell it right now. Uh, it is testing previous high of $73.27, 7 7.3 million shares. Uh, it pierced it today on 4.6 million shares. You're going to be light. Um, I do like the one that it had yesterday uh, with some volume. I would have liked a bigger candle uh, like we saw on the second that we did not get. Um, I like this, but my guess is that you're going to get at least a 50% retracement on this. I can't really see, especially what I looked at, is that there's not a shortage of crude, that probably the biggest changes when I was digging through this had to do with the changeover in some of, of the um, crack spread companies, the ones that the actual refiners uh, to me. So you might, I'm thinking we've got, uh, a nice setup. 45 may be the lows for crude out here, and 50 the highs. It may just be in a trading range, but I would probably want to go back and buy Oxy much closer. I mean, I love the test of this bottom, so I'm not saying that I think that the bottom falls out of these companies anytime soon, uh, but I think you can get a 50% retracement in Oxy, and I think it could come on nothing more than them pumping more crude, but certainly you on volume today. If you were along this thing out here at the lows, I think you have to say uh, the volume is going to come in light. So if you're trading and not buying it for an investment, I think you have to take the money and run. And uh, eh, what else would you say about that? I think that's it. Take the money and run. Anyway, uh, trying to think of anything else out here going on before the end of the day. Let's just check in and see how the uh, market is trading. You know, we're up eh, eight points on the S&P cash, 3.35 billion shares. So vo market volume is going to be good. I would love to see the high that we had today, uh, which is 1999.31, uh, tested one more time and maybe not so much volume. Generally, it looked to me like too many people shorting the 2000 level in the S&P cash. We might just need one or more time to get up there, see very light volume, meaning that the shorts have given up on it, lost their uh, appetite uh, to short. That's normally a good indication that maybe you found a high that we haven't found quite yet. One more time, maybe, just one more test, maybe. I'll see you tomorrow, same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.